I'm glad you're all here and uh, I will be showing you one of my games played actually 10 years ago in my first US Championship. And this tournament is very memorable because uh, it was the first time I played in the tournament and in fact I was very close to win it. In the last round I was playing Grandmaster Shabalov in a, in a very complicated game, in fact I was two pawns up. And if I would have won that game I would have win clear first in my first attempt. So, uh, But uh, this is a different game played in round 8 and it was a very important victory and I became the leader of the tournament after winning this game. So I like you to be focused everyone and you know participate and I'll be asking many questions here. So my opponent is a very experienced player is Igor Feig uh, uh, Feigl, Igor Feigl and uh, he also played uh, you know he's from Russia and he played some very very top grandmasters so very experienced opponent. So I play d4, I'm playing with the white pieces knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, bishop g7. Are you familiar with which opening is this? Please raise your hand if you know the opening. Which opening you think this is? Okay, so a few of you, good. So this opening is called <laughs> no, no. <laughs> okay, not quite, not quite, yes. King's Indian defense, okay? So remember, when black plays in this position, bishop g7, this is King's Indian defense. If somebody asks you a question here and say, what's the name of this opening? What's the correct answer here? <laughs> no, 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 let's see. Do you know what's the correct answer? If somebody asks you, let's say, if say, hey, what opening do you think this is? What, what, what opening black is playing here? No. See, at this point, it's not decided yet. You have to wait one more move. Okay, it's undecided which opening this is. Okay, so here actually you cannot answer yet because you know you don't know which opening it's going to be because he can play bishop g7, which he did, my opponent, and this is again remember everybody king's Indian defense. One of the most popular openings, and played by Kasparov, one of the you know the best King's Indian player known in history of chess is Gary Kasparov. So he played this opening, and he has some very nice wins with Black. But also, if he, opponent doesn't play Bishop G7, then he plays D5. Do you know this opening? Grunfeld. Uh huh. This is this is now Grunfeld. This is another popular opening, not as popular, but uh, still very popular. In fact. Uh, Today, uh, in the candidates tournament, I don't know if you're following this very big tournament, there were two games played in this opening. So one was Magnus Carlsen playing as Black, played the Grunfeld, another one was uh, Gelfand playing against Fiddler. So nowadays, it's a very popular opening. In fact, the top players, they use this opening a lot, Grunfeld defense. But uh, I did some videos also on the Grunfeld, so if you, you can find these videos on the YouTube channel and see there were some games I showed on the Grunfeld. But this was um, King's Indian defense he played. So castles, a knight f3, castle, bishop g5 I played. Now, when I play this bishop g5, this is called a uh, smyslov petrosian system. Okay? This is a very uh, rare system. I mean, the most popular move here is the, you know, e4 you can play, and this will be the classical uh, King's Indian defense kind of game. So e5, castle. But this is basically lots of theory, and usually white is under attack, but he is winning on the queen side. But, uh, you know, sometimes he, he gets checkmated. So it's a very complex uh, 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 position here you get. I also play this way too sometimes, but my main uh, specialty, I play bishop g5. I played this move for many, many years and have lots of experience playing this Smyslov Petrosian system. So now, Bishop g5, he played d6, and the point is to remember you don't play e4 here. Because if you were going to play e4, then you should do that right away. So you play e3 now. The point is in the King's Indian, this bishop is very strong. By putting the pawn on e3, you kind of restrict this bishop. So this bishop is not going to be able to attack anything right now. And now he played knight bd7. So you develop the bishop to e2 here. In this opening, you can also play bishop e3, but it's not very effective because here bishop will be blocking your queen. And also against the uh, fianchetto, 
structure, bishop is not very effective here. Because it's, you're not going to be able to take on g6, and you don't have that much scope on this diagonal. So that's why you play bishop e2. Now, he plays h6, attacking my bishop. And this is a, a kind of an, uh, a common idea here. Black is trying to win my dark square bishop by chasing it to g3 and playing knight h5. Now he's going to win my bishop on g3. But what's the problem with this pawn, you think? Because, yeah, if he can just win the bishop, that's... But there is something also negative about what he just did, right? Can you see what's the problem now by just this last few moves? Yes? You open up the diagonal. Uh -huh. Open up the diagonal. In fact, this diagonal is now very weak. And there are some weak light squares now. And you will see in this game, I will be able to actually... In fact, I will win this game because of the weak light squares. My play is going to be based on that. He's going to win my dark square bishop, but I'm going to try to take advantage of his weak light squares. So now in this position, when he plays knight h5, I decided I need to make a move here to force him to capture the bishop on g3. Because then I can take back with which pawn? h pawn, right? Of course you take back with h pawn. But now, can you find a move that will force him to capture? Knight to f3, where? No, the knight that's on f3. Uh-huh, yes, you want to move that knight, but which square? Which would be the best square? d2. So we go knight d2. Immediately attacking the knight. He's not going to go back, because if he goes back, his whole idea of g h6, g5, knight h5 going back, he's not going to go back. This will be very bad. Because he already weakened the position, and his idea is at least to get the bishop. So he takes. Again, most of the time, 90% of the time, you always take from the side to the center. But in this position, especially you take, because you open up the line for the rook. Okay. Now I take with the h pawn. Now he plays c5. It's a correct move here, because he has bishops. When you have bishops, you want to open the position. And that's what he's trying to do with the move c5. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, what about the idea of taking with uh, the f pawn and canceling and having an open pile for the rook there? It's an idea, but not as strong. Not as strong because here I could also possibly even go castle queen side. If I put my queen, it's definitely in this position you take with the other pawn. If, let's say, I already, if I already castled here, in some point, this idea you should consider. If I was already castled there, then I would consider that. But in this position, definitely taking back with the h pawn. And now pressuring on h6. So now he plays a good move c5. And the question is what to do now. He's trying to open up the position. And I need to do something. I need to react to this move now. So what do you do? Knight uh, on d2 to uh, b3. I could do that. I could do that, but then it's going to be a couple of exchanges in the center. And every time we exchange pawns, bishop's going to get stronger. And like, if I go here, he would take. Let's say I take back. Then he goes here, solidifying a little bit his position. And my knights are kind of away from the attack. My idea to have an advantage is to try to organize a very strong attack here. But here, with the knight on b3, my knights are a little bit Positionally, I'm not better that much. My uh, chances here to try to attack. But again, what to do after this move c5? d5. Even though this move might be a little bit hard to play if you're not so familiar with the position, you, because you may think. <laughs> OK. OK, so, um, so if c5. You play d5, the reason it might not be that easy to play this move, because you may think, wait a minute, look at this bishop now. It's very strong. But in fact, this bishop cannot really move away, because he needs to protect this weak pawn that we're putting pressure on. Okay? Yes, the bishop looks strong here, but it's just only one piece. 
And by pushing the pawn on d5, what do we gain? What do we gain? Space, right? So now we gain. We are into his position now, right? So remember, now when you push the pawn to d5, when your pawn now crosses the fifth rank here, that's already his territory. So you enter that. That means you control more squares now and restrict his pieces. Now, d5, f5 played, gaining space and also kind of blocking this diagonal. Okay? E6 for block. Yeah. Well, if you play E6 in this position, a few things possible. But one of the first ideas I can see that he capture ones. Now, because the position is getting a little bit more weak now. And after this move, we will have one, two. Two pieces attacking the pawn and no defenders. And he cannot defend the pawn in one move twice in this position. Okay, so this could be a problem. I think I will win a pawn. So that's why he played f5. Now let's see. From here on I want you to find the moves of this game. This is a 27 moves in this game, the total. So let's see here. We are on a move number 13 here. What do you think I should do here? Because he's trying to gain some space. Maybe even possibly play f4 in some point. What about f4 yourself? Aha. Uh -huh. That's what I played. Uh, but what is the main idea behind f4? Is it blockading his pawns? Or I have something else that I'm trying to do with f4 here? Attack. But Are you trying to restrict the square from his knight on e5? That's an idea, of course. That would be, you know, if he can somehow put the knight on e5, that would be good. But now we take that away. But there is something else I have after this move. I have another idea. H4 opening? Uh-huh. In some point, I can take, and h5 will be open. So this is a very important idea. Because then I can try to take. In fact, this is what happened in the game. But then if he takes. How are we going to take back? Huh? OK, so we take with the G pawn, of course. This way, we also undouble the double pawn. See, double pawns. So when you have a chance, you undouble. So you take that. And now, I will try to go queen c2. And I also have g4 idea. So I really have a very strong attack here, if he takes. But he didn't take. So he plays knight f6. Which is a normal move. And now, do you think I'm ready to attack here? What do you think? Do you think I'm ready to attack here? Because remember, I know, you know I mentioned a lot the development and everything. But it's very important to know that there, sometimes there are exceptions too <coughs> that we do. But overall, you think white is? Ready to attack here, or he needs to develop one more piece? How about the queen? Yeah. Queen. That's a very good idea. You want to develop the queen, because with the queen, it's going to be much easier to attack. We will have more possibilities. Now, what square do you think is the best for the queen here that you can try to put? What square we have for the queen in this position? Yes. C2. C2. Absolutely. Queen goes to C2. And now, I'm also getting ready to castle. OK? I'm getting ready to castle here. But I end up not castling in this game because I didn't have time. So again, not always. Sometimes time is more important. You can't just have everything. So if you have a good chance for attack, you go for it. So now, he played e6. I was just going to say that. You could've, he could have tried to play pawn g4, but there is a problem with this move. I go bishop d3. Mm -hmm. And now f5 is very weak. It's not so clear how to protect this pawn. Because I have the queen and a bishop attacking it. And he. 
I mean, you can play Queen D7, but it looks very, very awkward. Now, Probably castle. You could, but I mean, if you look at the position, I mean, I mean, this is not a very good. It's not very good. You know. No, the move he played in the game, it's actually very concrete. Because if I don't play precisely against the move he plays, he may end up actually better. Because he's really opening up the position here. That's what he's trying to do. G4 you could play, but it's just a bad position. I mean, you're going to have to go, I don't know, if queen d7, very awkward. Now, I can just go long castle and prepare the e4 break. If you go knight e8, then all your pieces are on the back rank. You know, they're supposed to be in the game. So it's not a very good setup. In fact, I might even have rook h5 here, so it's, yeah, it's not very good. You know, he could have maybe also taken, but it's still slightly, slightly better for me. So he played e6 here. It's a logical move, because he wants to now take and right away attack my pawn on e3, because my e3 pawn is weak, and my king is in the middle of the board. So the natural thing in this position would be to try to, let's say, castle, for example. But then he goes queen e7. And now he's threatening to capture, and the e3 pawn is weak. And this way he will start distracting me from the attack, because I have to worry about his threats now. OK? So that's why I didn't castle here. Now, let's see if we can find the best continuation here for white. After which, I have a big advantage here. Pawn takes g5. Pawn takes g5, correct. After this move, I have a very bad pawn structure. Very simple. If we just take off the queens off the board here, right? Black is probably winning. If the queens come off the board because he has two bishops, much better pawn structure. Positionally, I'll just be lost here. If the queens, we just take the queens off the board here. But I'm not going to exchange the queens here. I'm going to try to open the position of the king. How can I do that here? Not quite, not quite. Yes? Bishop d3, he still plays queen e7. Uh huh. Idea you correct, but timing. If you have the correct idea, you have to make sure that it's the right time also to play it. That's the idea to play g4 here to open this diagonal here. But what do I need to do first to make sure that diagonal is really weak? Capture on e6. Yes, capture on e6, immediately creating a threat. Queen takes f5. So he has to take back. He played bishop e6. Now g4. See, my king is in the middle of the board, so this is a very dangerous. But now I've calculated. I've calculated what's really going to happen now. And here, I'm, I need only one move. I can just, if I have time, I could just castle. So he can't really attack me immediately here. And when I have a time, I will just go long castle. But now I open up the position. Because for example, if I let him play g4 now, then he will block the position. So this, this move g4 is very important here. Here he spent a lot of time, maybe more than 30 minutes. Because he realized here it's very dangerous for him. Let's take a look why it's so dangerous. The first natural move would be just to go queen d7, maybe, to protect twice. He can maybe try to do that. But then I just go castle. Let's say he goes rook a, e8. Now I capture once. He captures. Bishop d3. 
after we exchange the bishops, just look at the light squares now. See, all the squares are very weak for him. And all I need to do in this position to win this game is just to deflect this knight from f6. And I have many ways to do that here. I simply can go here, then go knight d5, and as soon as he takes, queen h7 mate. And he, can, he can't really do anything to create, create counterplay here, because he's too busy defending against my threats. So this is what I'm trying to do. Like This would be a perfect position if I can get. I would just go rook df1, and then knight d5, and he can't really do anything. Do you see any defense here for black? And he can't exchange queens also. Like he would be, it would be excellent for him to exchange queens, but he can't really do that here. So that's why he spent a lot of time here. Let's take a look what's uh, what's happening if he just captures, for example. Why he cannot just capture, right? Now I go take, check. Now, can you find a winning move? Yeah, it's a good move, but I would prefer a castle, actually. <laughs> <laughs> because that way I connect my rooks. See, rook f1 is a natural move, but you also have to forget, uh, don't forget that you, know, you can still castle. Both moves are winning, but this is just much, much more effective, because when, when he takes, I will take with this piece and also give him checkmate from here, or win some more material, I mean win a rook or something after check takes. So he can't just take, because we take take and a very nice move castle. So and if he takes with the pawn, the only other thing he can do and the game the move in the game actually played the interesting move. And if he takes now here, can you find the best move here? Uh, knight d4, I'm not sure, because he has bishop f5. See, in this position, actually, I don't need to rush here, because I already accomplished my goal of weakening the diagonal. I just need to be a little bit patient here and make this move. Because this way, my king is very safe. And again, this piece is now coming to the f-file. And then I have many ideas, such as, Bishop d3, bishop h7. He cannot take queen h7 mate. If he comes king f7, then queen g6 check, and I win the bishop. His king is really open now. He cannot just take a pawn and try to defend. I have ideas such as queen g6 here as well. Too many threats. But if he takes, I'll just calmly castle. This would be my favorite move here. There are other moves as well, but then I just bring the rook on f1, and all my pieces are attacking his king here. He has some defenders, but it's just it's not going to be enough to defend it. So he played the interesting move, knight d7. It's hard to say whether or not this is the best move, but at least, again, I have to think now and try to find something really strong. The point of this move is he opened the file for the rook and protect it on f5. And he wants to go knight e5. If, let's say, I castle, I allow him to go knight e5, and he's back in the game now. This position is just about one move. That's why I don't have time to castle, because he will centralize his knight, and he's back in the game here. I'm still a little bit better, but I can't just uh, try to win right away. So now, What should I do now? Because you know his next move is going to be knight e5. Yeah. 
You could go knight f3, yeah, but... Not quite what I want to do. Remember, my goal is to exchange which pieces in this game? Light square bishops. Light square bishops. Once you exchange the light square bishops, then he can't hold the position anymore. Too many weak light squares. So would you capture on f5? Absolutely. And? Tempo, right? We attack. So he has to take back. Bishop d3. Bishop d3. Very important move. Just exchange the light square bishops off the board. Now, if he takes, we will reach the position that I was talking about. But I think I we will reach with extra few tempos for white, because I'm already threatening this check. So he's going to have to go back, and I would just castle. So same exact position, but with a few extra tempos, because he went knight d7 and knight f6. So just. Rook f1, knight d5, and game is over. So here, he spent time again and played bishop c3. Can you tell me why this move is losing? Why queen f6 is losing? Don't rush, don't rush. There are a few options you have, but you need to find the best move. Knight, knight d5 is good, yes, but you have to calculate, yeah? Because he has queen b2, for example. If he goes back, we just take, and we have a very nice fork. And winning the queen and king. So, And if he takes on b2, then I could just take. And take here first. Because now, if he takes my rook, I can simply take the knight on d7. And uh, it's a technically winning position, because not only I have two minor pieces for a rook, but they're just simply dominating the board, because rooks are not going to be attacking anything here. e8 square is also under control. I will simply come up king e2, put the pawn on g4, Knight e4, bishop, even though we don't have queens, but I, I can probably have a mating attack also with all my knights, bishop, and rook. So this is winning. And if it takes, you go rook b1 first, and now threatening the bishop and a 97 fork. And what is the only move to stop? These two ideas? Bishop f6. Bishop f6. Now what do you do? He goes here. Can you see the winning combination? I mean, there are many ways to win, but. Well, you could go 94. Forced, forced win here, basically. When pieces like this, like crumped, and they just defending, they're overloaded. Okay, are you familiar with overloaded piece term? This is when one piece is doing too many things, defending two things. So now you just need to find a way to deflect one of the defenders. E4 is good. I like G4 a little bit better. Now where is the rook gonna go? One square, right, to go here. And now what do you do? Knight. Now it's clear, right? The rook is the overloaded piece. I'm sorry, the knight is defending. So we take, takes, check, and take the other piece too. OK? There are a few other ways to win, but this would be the most concrete way. OK? So that's why he cannot play queen f6. Because knight d5 is just winning the game on the spot. And if he goes queen e6, what do you do? Just, yeah, tell me the move. Bishop takes, correct. See, like, this would be a mistake to go, because now he wins. Check. And then he will probably mate me. 
So you have to be careful. You could be winning, but then you just get carried away, make one quick move, thinking you're winning, and then suddenly you can never relax. Okay? You can only relax when opponent resign. Okay? Because there are many games you're winning, but you're not going to win at the end. So you have to be make you have to make sure you're focused. So you take, he takes, now. Queen takes rook. Uh-huh. Queen takes rook. Again, this idea works because of which? Again, overloaded piece, right? The queen is the overloaded piece because defending e7 square and defending the rook. So when the piece is overloaded, you always have to look for these ideas. Okay? So now we go queen takes, sacrifice the queen, he takes back, and now check. Goes back. So now we see that he cannot go queen f6. The reason. So yeah, that's why I want to show you all the possible moves so you know why he, he chooses to play bishop c3. Because this move looks dangerous to play. Now, bishop takes c3. Best practical chance because we saw other moves are just losing. And here at least it could get a little bit confusing. So many things I can do. I can take with a pawn. I can take the c3 bishop. I can take the f5 bishop. Usually when you have choices like this in chess, it's possible to make a mistake. Because a lot of moves, they look good. And then you end up making the move that it's not the best. So this is where it's common to make a mistake when you have a choice of the moves. So you have few choices here. But what do you think is the best? Bishop takes bishop. Uh huh. Absolutely. Bishop takes bishop. Because this move creates a very strong threat of bishop e6. And now we open up the diagonal for the queen. But the problem is, what do we do with the check? Because we cannot take now with the queen, because the bishop is hanging. See, now I take with the king. See, now my king is also not very safe, but again, it's very concrete. Uh, by the way, he couldn't just go back. If he goes back anywhere, he, he just gets mated. Check. Comes up. Check with the rook. Well, that's a mate too, I guess. And check mate. King is just too weak. So that's why he plays bishop d2 check. What happens if the queen would take the bishop on c3? Uh huh. See, this was, he was hoping maybe for something like that because then he gets a chance to centralize his knight. Because the pressure from the f5 bishop is gone. So remember, I had two pieces attacking. Now the pressure is gone. He's kind of, I'm still better again, but he's kind of back in the game. I mean, I take, he takes, I go long castle, but it's not the same. I mean, white is still much better. So I took, he takes, he has to take, I take with the king now. Now, the threat is very strong, bishop e6. And it's not so clear what he can do to stop it. For example, if he plays queen e7, what do you do? Looks like he just stopped bishop e6. Huh? Bishop e6 anyway, very strong. Because, again, we see another idea. Seems like in this game we see lots of overworked piece theme ideas here. Now, what is the queen doing? Protecting here and here, right? By playing bishop e6, we sacrifice the bishop. But he cannot take it because of the mate. Again, now he has to come up and... You can just checkmate by checking with the rook this time. He comes up here, queen f5 mate. So he doesn't have, he, all he needs is a one move to put that knight on e5 in this game. Then he's safe, but he just doesn't have time to put that knight on e5 here. Okay? Now, uh, also, it looks like he may just play this move. It looks like he might be able to do this, but why is this move losing? Bishop 
bishop e6 check, but then he has king g7. At least for a moment, it looks like he stopped the threats, yeah? Very good move. Queen to f5, simply threatening to take the pawn. That will be a checkmate. So your bishop is in, your rook is in, but now you need one more piece into the game. And you bring your queen into the game. And threat is very strong. He cannot do anything. And no worries about the discovery check, because we take back with the queen. If the queen wasn't controlling, they would lose the queen. He would take it, but we just take. So that's why he played rook f6. Defending against bishop e6 and opening up some squares for his king to escape. And again, he needs one more move here. To put the knight on f8, he will be safe. Let's say I just try to do something else, he puts the knight on f8. It's not going to be easy to win now. Now, white is winning, winning by force here. How? Now you just need to calculate. You have a win here, but you need to calculate. Bishop e6? Yeah. Check. Very good. Sacrificing the bishop. He has to take. He cannot go here because after the check he will lose his queen. He cannot go here because he will just get mated. Check with the queen, has to go here, check with the queen, and check with the rook. Cannot take the bishop, and we mate him. So he has to play rook takes e6, which he did. Now we need a follow-up. We need a precise follow-up here. When you sacrifice a piece, you have to calculate, because if you don't have a checkmate, then you win. Queen h7, correct. King f8. Uh -huh, see, rushing. Mm -hmm. Rushing, and that's an inaccuracy right there. You're letting him, develop. You're letting him get the knight in. Yeah. You're letting him get the knight in, the rook in. You have to make sure you check that way his pieces don't come. Correct. Queen h8 check. He cannot go here. Why? Checkmate. See, king is in the box. So he has to come here. Now. now don't rush again. Don't rush again. We check this way. He gets there, you know. Rook h7 check. He goes here. Again, don't rush. There are a few ways you can play here, but you need to find the best move. See, if you go queen check, most natural move, and then he goes here. Not as clear, okay? My goal is to make sure his pieces remain the way they are. Not let them come in and block the checks. It's a possible move. That's probably also winning. That's probably winning also. Something a little bit better. Little bit better. Because I'm not really interested in winning material here. I have a force mate here. But there is a square that is occupied right now. And I want to make sure that I have that square for my queen. Which square I'm talking about? H7. H7. Yes, because his king is going to go on the light squares. So I want to have that square available for my queen. Rook g7, check. King f5. Now we could do queen, but now let's look at the position and see if we have a piece that is ready to come in into the game. 
Rook F1. See, it's good my king is here, because if the king was only one, I couldn't use it. So here I go check. He resigned here. Let's see why. He's getting mated. If he goes here, mate in one, queen h3. If he goes here, mate in two, several mate in twos. Double check, takes rook f4 mate. And if he goes now here, you will see why I played rook g7 now. So I can use this square for my queen. There were probably other ways to win also, but this is just the most precise check. He comes here, queen f5 checkmate. So he resigned here. So he resigned after I played rook f1 because he's going to get checkmated. So as you can see in this game, he didn't get to move his rook. Queen. See, this piece is never came in into the game. Sometimes there are games like this where you just don't have time to get your pieces out, and that's usually not very good. So, and even though he's he's got an extra piece on the board, but he cannot really do anything because the position of the king is very weak. Mm -hmm.